Hello everyone, and welcome to part two of the well, Wales, Wells, I was going to say, Wales campaign for EU4. And, yeah, this is going to be quite a slow, I guess, slow beginnings, but uh, we are a tiny little nation at the minute. And, yeah, let's just have a look what we're going towards. I think, yeah, we need to unlock this top national idea so we can get the exploration one on the way. Um... Because, oh yeah, if we're, as Wales, we're going to need to focus on colonies, as I said in the previous episode. Because uh, inevitably England will declare war on us at some point. They could declare war on us next month in the game, for all I know. And this campaign could fail. But, uh, the way we save that is we take colonial territory and build a good city there and transfer capitals from Gwynedd to the new colonial power or colonial territory that way we can keep Wales alive but our territory will be lost inevitably and it'll mean we'll have to rebuild somewhere either in Africa or Americas or the, in the Americas either south or north and then we'll someday return and take Britain back but at the minute that could happen but for all I know this game is so random that we might be able to hold Wales the entire game I doubt it but um, it's possible England is so powerful like they've got so much more territory means they can have so much more income hire more troops and all that stuff like that and yeah we don't really have a chance. We've got two tiny provinces that don't even have that good stats. We got all right. I'll show you the base tax value is basically the overall value of the province. It shows you its worth in terms of uh, yearly income, I believe. Um, but let's have a look at London. There we are, twelve. That's just one of their provinces. Yorkshire's seven, Essex is eight, six, Wessex is seven. Cornwall is four. Yorkshire's seven. Yeah, we're just totally outclassed. They've got so much more money coming in than we have. So we'll have to focus on um, getting a colonial power set up. So I believe this is Terra Incognita. So this hasn't been discovered, I believe. Although by the colour of it, it looks like it's owned by Portugal. That might just be because it's an island in the middle of the sea. Wait, this is owned by Spain, isn't it? And that's what I was going to say, is we're going to be competing with Castile, or Spain, whatever you want to call them. England and the Dutch. Who else is... Uh, we're going to be competing with Portugal, Spain, England and the Dutch for uh, colonial territory. So what we're going to have to do is step it into overdrive and get that research done. So that we can get an explorer. Okay, what I'm going to do is use this fleet, uh, protecting the trade that's going to London. Right, let's have a look. This fleet will add 3.16 trade power to London. It will increase your the trade value to 0 0.58. And I'll make a loss. Okay, if I send the entire fleet that way, I'll make a loss. That's interesting. What are these? These are transport ships. Transports are pretty much useless at the minute. So, um, yeah, let's just get the let's get the transport ships disbanded. Save us a bit more money. We don't have any use for them at the time being. So, or I could just have them stationed somewhere else so I can manage it easier. Let's station them in Glamorgan, and what I'll do. With these, I'll split them into two units. And we'll go and secure the trade in London. We're not going to make any money there. Damn it. Not making any... We'll make a loss if we do that. What if we send one boat on its own? Is it still going to be a loss? Hmm. 
Right. Okay, so that's... Interesting. Let's have a look how much we're actually making. We're making 0 0.01. I believe that's how it works anyway. No, it's forwarding trade power. So we're collecting from London. So we need to forward trade power to uh, London to collect. So what I'm going to do is send... Let's just have a look how this affects trade. Let's send this one to London. Actually, because there's... There could be conflict, so I'm going to send the double fleet. Protect trade in... London. Right, okay. Let's have a look at the trade income now. Right, it increased a tiny bit. Um... At least that's better than nothing. Um... Let's send this one to Bordeaux. We'll make a profit of 0 0.03. Okay. It's better than nothing again. Still very, very tiny amounts of money coming in. It's because we're a tiny nation at the minute. If I send this one to anywhere else... With I could send this one, both of them, to Bordeaux then, actually. Let's cancel orders, merge them together... Protect trade in... Ah, oh, that's different. It would, it would give me a profit if I only sent one. In fact, I'm gonna give... I'm gonna try something else. I'm gonna send all of my ships to London to see what happens to the trade. Let's have a look. Does it increase? Yeah, it did increase a tiny bit. So... We're making one each turn, or each month, I should say. Uh, so, as you can imagine, that's super duper slow. How old is our king, out of curiosity? He's 80 years old. Holy shit. He could pass away any time. And then we... This, the heir, at least we've got a good heir to the throne. It's quite good. But that means we're going to get a regency council. Because he's only just been born. And a Regency Council affects your legitimacy and prestige and points. I'll talk through that when it happens. It's easy. It's pretty much uh, straightforward to understand. Um, this guy's got quite good stats, but he's only one years old. Shit. He needs to be 16 to take the throne. Okay. Right, we've got an alliance with Scotland. We should be safe in the short term. We can hire one military leader. What I'm going to do is save that for now. These are our notifications, by the way, as you probably were able to figure out on your own. Uh, I can hire a free military leader, which will cost me 50 points to hire. But by free, it means it won't cost me each turn. So it'll literally be free, I guess. And what I'm going to do is use that military leader, this free one, to either get an explorer or a conquistador. It'll probably be an explorer. Um, I think what I'm going to do is try and aim for either Africa or North America to colonize. I think North America is more realistic. There's a good trade node if I get there first uh, that I can use. But, right. Let's get on with it. Let's fast forward. This is going to be a slower game to start off with, and if you're not into that sort of stuff, I totally get it, but I like this game for that. It's like a slow build-up, but pretty it's pretty cool to be super powerful slowly over time. Right. Uh, my king, we've stopped trying to improve relations with England due to our maximum... Okay, I'm going to maintain the diplomat so he keeps some friends with us, because they are going to invade at some point. Are losing confidence in your get ability, losing a stability drop. Shit, we need to fix that. Don't know why that would happen. Oh, the old monarch died too soon. Okay, so we're going to have a regency council, just as I was explaining before. The regency council basically doesn't have any stats. So we're now equal with England, probably. Um... Oh, they've got a good administrative skill, apparently. So we do get 
quite we get some points well, that's not bad actually I thought the Regency Council was gonna be balls no we get good stats that's random usually Regency Council's terrible Wow, okay, so we have still got some points coming in. It's not great, but it's better than nothing. Um, what was I going to do then before it... Uh, damn, I had a, something... I, oh, yeah, yeah, I want to restore stability. Stability, you might as well think of it as uh, happiness, I guess, or um, whether your country's together as one, sort of, if everybody agrees with each other. Um, how can I explain it? The lower it goes, you can imagine, if it goes below, like it's minus one now, rioting and literally stability, as you can imagine, and you had stability of the country in general, and you spend diplomatic or admin points, I can't remember at the minute, administrative points, so you spend 90 points to restore stability. We need that to be at least zero. Uh... Yeah, we'll do it one more. Plus one stability. That's better than nothing. Again, better than nothing. <laughs> That's going to be an ongoing saying. Because with such a tiny nation, we've got to be careful. So, Right, there's our fleet protecting the sea. Protecting the sea. Protecting the trade nodes. Um, right, let's have a look at what trade we're actually getting here now. 0 0.5, obviously. We're the next biggest trade power. Right, so what ideally we want to do is get markets and... Uh, what else do we need? Markets and... Trade depots here to increase our power. But that's going to take some time. It's diplomatic technology. Um, camp, I think we're going to unlock that next, aren't we? Yeah, marketplace. We'll get those... Yeah. But we just spent our admin power on... Um, stability, that's the the downside of these being the main resources. They're spread across making loads of decisions, so I chose to increase stability rather than save up again for this. Hopefully we can fast forward now. This is going to take quite a while, so we're going to fast forward quite a few years. Probably have to make some decisions in the meanwhile. Um, at least we're saving up over the months. So as you can see, we're like fast forward in months and months and months now. One month. Two months. Yeah, we're going quite fast through history now. But it's what we need to do to progress as Wales. Right keep going and going and going and what I'm trying to do as well is um, hey, yep, let's have a look merchant suffering our focus on merchant merchantilism is making life hard for merchants who who trade in foreign places give them support or they should have stayed home no we need to give them support so we're gonna lose some diplomatic power there that would be Alright, my king or sh uh, Yeah, that's nothing to worry about for us. Um, yeah, as you notice, then we had to make a decision to spend diplomatic power. So that's taken away from our marketplace and dock research at the minute. Um, let's have a look. The second fleet. These guys can't really protect anything because they're just transports. So I could disband them for an extra bit of money. Uh, how much do they cost? It's a tiny amount of money. 0 0.04. So that would be 0 0.08 if I got rid of them. Let's have a look at the economy, see how significant that would be. Yeah, it's, it's, it's worthless. It, worthless. I mean, it's a pointless thing. Might as well keep them harboured and low maintenance at the minute. Uh, one thing that I have been thinking about is I sent my fleet out to protect the trade nodes, but their fleet maintenance is low. I wonder if I could up that so it's just one. So it's, it's, I can see it through the text just about, there we are, oh wait, 99 we're on. Right, so we've got a bit of more fleet maintenance for the patrolling things, I wonder if that affects the trade power, I don't know, we'll have to find out. Just have a look, is that, yeah it did admit, 
Okay, so higher maintenance of the boats helped us. 32.5% of our income is coming from trade. Because we're tiny, that's what we're going to have to focus on. So, right, let's continue fast forwarding. I have no idea if I'm explaining this game properly. <laughs> but, yeah, it's got so much depth to it that you probably pick it up learning uh, from the videos, I mean. Right, I've elected a new Pope, okay. Anything we need to do? We got a free, a free diplomat. We could try and fix diplomatic relations with France because these guys are going to be super powerful, um, and they're enemies of England. So if we got them on our side, we might hold England off from invading. But at the minute, we've just got Scotland, which they're pretty powerful, but still are no match for England. Um, we just have to hope that England doesn't decide to invade straight away. Right, so we're making decent... Well, not decent. It's better than nothing, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we can use that to increase the fleet maintenance. Let's do that. Let's increase it to... Until we're at zero point. Or we could... Yeah, till it's plus one. Let's keep going... There we are. so we're making one each month. It's crap, but it's, uh, yeah. You have to be patient if you're playing as, a, like, a tiny nation. See, there we are, more income from trade. Probably broke even, but trade power is quite important, so it's worth it. Right, so let's have a look. How far are we off from getting that admin tech? August 1452, so three years away from it. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look. National ideas. We want to go for exploration. I think I said that already. Uh, we could go for a mission. Let's have a look. Improve our prestige. Hmm. What's this now? The rival of a threat. France's arrival of a country considered a threat to us, so they should be our friend. Select this mission as your mission. Effect on completion. Gain 25 diplomatic power. That would help. Let's try that then. Is the arrival of a country considered to be a threat to us? Yeah, England is a super threat to us, and yeah, it's like, uh, I don't know, living next to Kim Jong un at the minute, so. Improve relations. There we go. Send the diplomat over there. I'm not entirely sure what the criteria for that mission was. Um, objective. France's opinion of Wales is at least 125. Okay. The dude might be able to do that. Right, so again, lots of fast forwarding. Got to stay patient. Okie dokie. Let's have a look at our... Trade is good still. Nearly close enough to getting a marketplace. As soon as we get a marketplace, that'll help us with our trade again. Alright, lack of protection. This is why they call it free trade. Maybe there's something we can do. Gain one merchantalism and yeah, it's mercantilism, not merc. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Um, maybe there's something we can do. So that's going to cost us 25 diplomacy. Ah, we can afford that. We've got quite a huge amount of diplomacy there. Uh, that would help our economy. Let's just fast forward it and see what happens with that decision. There we are. It's quite good. Numbers, numbers everywhere. Let's have a look. Merchantilism. Our current... I think I'm saying that. Mercantilism. I don't know. Merchants, I'll just call it. <laughs> Our current level of merchants given the following benefits. Provincial power modifier plus 22%. 
All right. So it's generally good. Okay. That's a good rule of thumb. If your options are two stat, uh, two options, and one's green and one's red, usually the green ones are the better for you. <laughs> Color coded. So I'm going to split the part here. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. See you then. Bye-bye.